If you have failed a bunch of your coding interviews and you don't know why because most companies don't really give you any feedback on what you did wrong, or if you're just getting started interviewing, I'm gonna tell you some critical mistakes that you should avoid. Some of these mistakes are things that I've actually done in the past, and other mistakes are ones that I've seen candidates make from my short experience at Google. Possibly the most common mistake that people make is jumping straight into the code or jumping straight into explaining your solution without clarifying the question with the interviewer and without making sure that you're on the same page with the interviewer. But what exactly does that mean? Well, the best way to explain it would be through an example. Suppose that we were in a room together and I drew this on a whiteboard. And I told you that given some target value, for example, in this case, three, and given some tree like this one, write an algorithm that returns true if the target value exists in the tree and return false if the target value does not exist in the tree. Now, if you're the candidate and then you immediately start writing an algorithm, what if you assumed that this is actually a binary search tree and then you write a binary search algorithm? You look at two, you see that it's less than three. So you say, okay, we're gonna now traverse towards the right because that's where all values larger than two would be in a binary search tree. Then you look at this value and with binary search, you do find the target and then you can return true. The only problem is that I said that this was a tree. I never said it was a binary search tree. I gave you an example that was kind of misleading because it looked like a binary search tree. They, the values were in order, but the candidate assumed that it was a binary search tree. And that's what you don't wanna do. You wanna clarify, well, what kind of tree is it? Is it a binary search tree? If it is, then the algorithm was correct. But if it's not, then you actually just have to possibly go through every single value in the tree, like an in-order traversal. And there's no way for you to know. You really just have to ask the interviewer. So always clarify the problem with the interviewer. And second, explain your algorithm before you actually code it up. Another really common mistake that people make is going silent when they're stuck. If you're given a problem and you don't immediately know how to solve it, it's okay to take a few minutes to read the problem, think about it, and then contemplate some solutions, and then think about some trade-offs between possible solutions. But if you can't come up with anything and you know, you've been sitting there just thinking for five to 10 minutes and you're not getting anywhere, you should not just be sitting there silent because the interviewer is possibly willing to help you, but they're just sitting there watching you with a blank stare on your face and they don't know how to help because they don't even know where you're stuck. Do you not understand the question? Or maybe you're just stuck on one really small detail that the interviewer would be willing to give you a hint on. So you definitely, as you're trying to solve a problem and you're stuck on something, you definitely wanna explain your thought process at least enough so that the interviewer knows what you're thinking about and they know what direction you're going in so that they can help you or maybe point you into a better direction to solve the problem. And this style of communication is something I very much try to emphasize in all of my videos. Another problem people have is with preparation, preparing for the coding interview. Some people just don't prepare at all. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume that that's not you. But another thing is that some people prepare in the wrong way. Not all coding interviews are the same. Now, the vast majority of big tech companies do ask a very similar style of questions, data structures and algorithms, which is why I created neatcode.io and that's what this channel is really based on, data structures and algorithms. I try to create a lot of free resources for you to understand them. But there's actually some companies that don't ask you data structures and algorithms, even some tech companies. For example, Stripe, I've heard, does not really do the whole whiteboarding thing. So before you go into the interview, you do want to at least have an idea of what kind of questions you're expected to be asked. Another mistake that people make, which is sort of subtle in this case, is not reading the room during their interview. What I mean by that is some people don't read the interview or they kind of tunnel vision on what they're doing at that moment. And it's understandable because an interview is stressful. You're nervous. You're focusing a lot on the question that's being asked, but you might not be focusing enough on the interviewer. And some companies, especially at Google, want you to be able to work with your interviewer. It's not just that you're given a question, okay, you clarified it maybe, that's good, 
but then you just go straight into coding and then your interviewer looks at your code, looks good, and that's it. It doesn't really work like that at Google and I'm sure other companies as well. Every interview and interviewer is different. You want to be able to adapt to the situation. Maybe the interviewer actually does want you to just write code. They don't even care about you explaining your thought process. And sometimes that is the case. That has been the case in my experience. In other interviews, they want you to very much communicate your solution. They hardly care about your code and your finished code or even a bug-free solution. They wanna know exactly how you think. So being able to adapt on the spot is very important important. You go into an interview with some expectations of your own, but don't be surprised if your expectations turned out to be wrong and you have to adapt to the situation. The last mistake that people make is not managing their time effectively. Suppose we had a 45 minute interview. I'm the interviewer and I had two questions planned for this 45 minute round. I gave you one question and maybe it turns out that it took you the whole 45 minutes to solve the problem. And you were trying your best, but it just took you a while. That's okay. There's not much you can do about that other than just go faster in the future. But another mistake would be you thought I, as the interviewer, only had one problem. So you intentionally spent a lot of time on the first problem explaining your solution, over explaining it to the point that you could have solved it in 20 minutes, but you spent a lot of time on the whiteboard explaining a bunch of different scenarios, going in depth on the brute force solution, which you really didn't need to do. Instead of it taking you 20 minutes, it took you 30 minutes or 40 minutes through that over explanation. Now that's just one example. But in general, you want to be aware that there is a set amount of time for every interview round. If you're lucky, your interviewer will actually give you kind of a warning like, okay, there's 10 minutes left or five minutes left, something like that. But you kind of want to be able to manage your own time and kind of understand what pace are you going at? Are you going too slow possibly? And if that is the case, you want to try to speed it up. Maybe if you're going too slow and it's taking you too much time, instead of trying to go for the optimal solution, maybe you can go for a slightly less optimal solution. Maybe talk about that with your interviewer, talk about trade-offs, do something to get yourself unstuck and make sure that you have some solution, which is better than no solution. So these are some of the most common mistakes that you can avoid to make sure that you pass your next coding interview and hopefully get that job or internship that you're looking for. If you agree or disagree with any of these, please feel free to discuss it in the comments. I read pretty much every single comment and I love going back and forth with people whether I agree or disagree, so please feel free to let me know. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. You can check out neatcode.io, which is a free resource I created to help people prepare for coding interviews, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.